Over the weekend, I got chatting to a shop assistant. She had a cough. I asked if she was able to stay at home until she felt better. She said no. She said that if she didn't come in, her shifts would be cut. And if her shifts were cut, she wouldn't be able to pay her rent. Madam Deputy Speaker, this is happening to working people all over the country. And as we stand on the purpose of a crisis, unlike anything that has happened in my life, we needed a budget that rose to the challenge, a one which protects the working class from the worst effects of the coronavirus outbreak. But this budget doesn't do that. It doesn't even undo the damage of the past 10 years, where the party opposite systematically weakened our defences, ran down our public services, pushed down the most vulnerable, and cut down the power of working people, leaving millions insecure and on the edge. And now the NHS is on its knees. Doctors and nurses already pushed to the limit. The social security system already broken. And as this crisis makes social care more urgent than ever, the budget ignored it. The elderly, the sick and the disabled are being abandoned. Madam Deputy Speaker, this crisis exposes the worst features of our rotten system. Price gougers exploit it to make fortunes out of our expense. Private hospitals charge millions for the NHS to use their beds. Workers face mass layoffs and insecure jobs force people to work even when they're ill. Let's be clear, a market approach to the outbreak will condemn working class people to decimation. It's not found in this budget, but there is an alternative. An alternative which can be seen in the example of Denmark, where the government has negotiated a deal between trade unions and employers to protect wages and prevent layoffs. This alternative approach to the crisis has solidarity, equality and a belief in collective action. It confronts the challenges we face together with a plan that puts people before profit and public health before private property. This is what we could do guarantee economic security for everyone, give statutory sick pay to all workers at a decent rate, so no one has to choose between health and hardship, suspend rent, mortgage and utility payments, so no one is evicted, has their home repossessed or has their services cut just because they're sick, support local authorities and food banks to distribute food so no one goes hungry, Equip our NHS to deal with this emergency. That's bringing in hospital cleaners in-house and paying them the real living wage. They're at the front line and they deserve protection. Requisitioning private hospitals rent-free. Our need is more important than their profits. And repurposing manufacturing plants. Our hospitals need ventilators. And in this crisis, we can't let the vulnerable suffer the most. We need to prevent a catastrophe in immigration detention by releasing detainees before the virus rips through those inhumane cages, bring abandoned homes into public use to give homeless, uh, homeless people a roof over their heads, and scrap the universal credit five-week wait, uplift the payment and the benefits cap, suspend all sanctions, and give social care the same funding promise that NHS has. Madam Deputy Speaker, I will end on this. This crisis brings into focus our interdependence. We need each other. The CEO is nothing without the factory worker, the bus driver or the nurse. An injury to one is an injury to all, as the old trade union saying goes. And none of us are safe until all of us are safe. This is an urgent demand to the government. Protect the vulnerable, guarantee support to all workers and make those with the broadest shoulders pay their fair share. Thank you.